Hello and welcome to Rewind. I'm Kamal Santa Maria. Here on Rewind, we delve deep into the Al Jazeera documentary archive to bring you some of the best and most influential programs of the past decade, as well as news of how the stories have moved on since. Jerusalem. It is a holy city to all three major Abrahamic religions. Jews, Muslims, and Christians, they've coexisted within its walls for centuries, but it is only the Jews who lay claim to it as their exclusive capital. And that is a position that's been given added force since Donald Trump came to power in the United States and, in the face of international law, recognized the city as Israel's capital, as well as announcing he would relocate the U.S. embassy there from Tel Aviv. And in recent decades, Israeli settlements have been springing up in East Jerusalem, previously recognized as Palestinian. It is a process that has been developing for many decades, but in 2009, Al Jazeera's Jackie Rowland went to the front line of what can only be described as a battle for the right to live in a city that is the beating heart of the Holy Land. From 2009, this is Holy Land Grab. Jerusalem. 2009 fought over, dreamt about, and worshipped in for hundreds of years. The most recent conqueror was Israel. It captured the eastern part of the city in 1967, bringing the whole of Jerusalem under its control, in defiance of international law. Since then, Israel has been working with determination to weld the two parts of the city into its eternal, indivisible capital by building houses for Jews and destroying houses belonging to Arabs. Israel's project is nearly complete. Within a year or two, if no one intervenes, the invisible line dividing Jerusalem into Jewish and Arab parts will be erased. The Palestinian village of Silwan clings to a steep hillside facing the walls of the old city. In the valley below lies Al Bustan neighborhood. It's a setting resonant with meaning for Muslims, Christians, and Jews. The Bustan neighborhood is situated in the, the most important, one of the most important areas in Jerusalem, right next to the walls of the ancient city, situated right where the Temple Mount is, 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 is observed very, very closely. So it is one of the most important areas in Jerusalem and may, maybe in the entire world. So the Israeli authorities have plans for Al-Bustan. They say the houses in these narrow alleyways were built without permits. They want to flatten the whole neighborhood and turn it into open parkland. Allah! It's a tourist development plan that would wreck the lives of an entire Palestinian community. The municipality has slapped demolition orders on 88 houses, which would make 1,500 people homeless. <laughs> Musa Mahmoud Ode is one of them. He's the local imam and he lives with his wife and children in a street proudly decorated with scenes from the old city. The neighborhood is changing. Dotted around the hillside are houses where Jewish settlers have moved in. They build extra rooms, sometimes extra floors. But the Sheikh doesn't recall any of these houses being demolished. At the same time, a battle for historical legitimacy is underway. Archaeologists are digging at several sites in East Jerusalem with a clear political agenda to uncover evidence of ancient Jewish life that would strengthen Israel's claim to the whole city. We haven't been allowed to go in and film. Why do you think that is? Well, this characterizes the, this present stage of archaeology here in Siwan, which is archaeology behind fences, 
And it seems they want to keep things under wraps to prevent people from, from peering in. And what about you? Have you been able to get inside? I can't get into any of these sites. I'm barred from visiting them. It seems that the Antiquities Authority doesn't want criticism, I guess, of their work. One reason for that, the Antiquities Authority, which is a state body, has handed over some of the sites to a private organization called El Ad, which is run by Israeli settlers. Elad, who runs the national park, has taken the interpretation associating these fragmentary remains with King David and has made that a cornerstone of their entire approach to the site. So that really history for them begins with David and uh, in, when in fact archaeological remains that can be directly associated with David are almost non-existent. So there's a definite conflict of interest here between their role as stewards of the ancient heritage and their role as settlers and as people who want to actually dispossess the Palestinians in Siwa. Meet one such settler, Arie King. Armed only with a motor scooter and a crash helmet, he wants to evict Palestinians from East Jerusalem and replace them with Jewish families. He's on a crusade to extend Jewish ownership over the whole of the city. If I will compare it to an onion, if we have in the onion the sweetest part, it's the heart, and this is the Temple Mount, this is the old city, we are trying to put layers of, and more layers in order to protect the heart of the onion. And this is Yerushalayim, and we know what is happening when you try to cut the onion. Usually tears are in your eyes, and our aim is to not to get to this uh, situation of a uh, Tear, to have tears because somebody is trying to cut Yerushalayim. Bye bye, Moab. The layers he's talking about are Jewish settlements in Silwan, in the Mount of Olives, and in Ras al Amud. Israel is gradually connecting the settlements and the archaeological parks to form a belt around the old city. Danny Zeidemann is a lawyer who keeps a close watch on the settlements. He's come to look at some apartments for Jews that have been built in the Palestinian neighborhood of Jabal el Mukaba. Okay. Now, there are, as a rule, two kinds of settlements in East Jerusalem. One kind are the settlements sponsored by the government, and the, the other kind of settlements are ideologically motivated messianic settlements. And you can see that there's one like that. You see that Sorry, Israeli flag. Sorry, I didn't speak Hebrew. You, speak you can English? stop uh, photographing. Why, why is that? Well, because I'm asking. Are we, on, are we on public property here? Yes. Okay. It is like a child's uh, um, coloring book. Connect the dots, and connecting the dots is basically the encirclement of the old city by a ring of settlements okay. and a settler-informed narrative in the public the domain. Camera. Sheikh Musa is worried. The people from the municipality have been back, this time with heavily armed police, to hand out more demolition orders. من داخل سلوان ومن داخل القدس. On a hilltop overlooking Silwan is a monastery built close to the spot where the disciple Judas Iscariot is believed to have killed himself. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, and treachery still lurks in the valley. Mohammed Marara admits that for several years he conspired against his fellow Palestinians. He says Israeli police coerced him into helping the settlers grab property in Silwan. They ran a simple scam. First find a victim, then make problems for him. Marara used to operate as a go-between, a con man who tricked, bribed and smooth-talked Palestinians into parting with their property. <laughs> או שומע מאיזה צד, בא אליו, רוצה לצאת מכל הבלגן הזה, נשמח. האנשים שלי מוכנים לשבת אותך ולסדר לך את כל העניינים ולסיים לך אחלה עורך דינים במדינה ולשלם לעורך דינים ולגמור את הסיפור. התמורה תשב ממולם, 
תגיע אותם להסכם מכירה. On the road again with the settler Arie King, another man trying to separate Palestinians from their homes, but he insists that he's working within the law. The leaflet here is a few sentences from the Quran, chapters from the Bible. Saying, uh, explaining the, the young children, where are they living? They are living in the land that belongs to the Jewish nation. And we are also telling them that if they have some problem, not them, they are children, but their parents, we are addressed for them and we can solve financial problems. The way to do it is by resettling them, finding them work in other places over the world. The teachers are understandably angry. Arie King is inciting Palestinians to leave their homeland, a kind of ethnic cleansing delivered with a velvet glove. Back in Al Bustan, people are increasingly worried about Israel's plans to demolish their homes and turn the neighborhood into a public park. The municipality has sent envoys into the valley offering the Palestinians alternative lands on the outskirts of Jerusalem if they agree to leave their homes. The people of Al-Bustan said no. Sheikh Musa decides to take their grievances to the city hall. The planning committee is in session. These are the people who make decisions that affect the lives of thousands of Palestinians living in the east of the city. The new mayor of Jerusalem told Al Jazeera that all committee meetings are open to the public and anyone can ask a question. We decide to put his offer to the test. We would like to ask a question. Okay. We would like a resident of Jerusalem to be allowed to ask a question. You are disturbing now to the committee. You are disturbing. Okay, so see, stand there and listen. He didn't say that you can interrupt. It seems that the mayor's decision hasn't filtered down to his councillors. In the end, the chairman of the committee invited us to continue the conversation in his office. בסופו של יום אנחנו רוצים להגיע למצב שכל מי שנמצא בבוסתן אם הוא יצטרך לעזוב את המקום שלו, יהיה לו חלקת אדמה אחרת שהיא שוות ערך פלוס מה שאני רציתי להוסיף נכס. To the north of the old city, settlers have also established a foothold in the Palestinian neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah. They say Jews bought land here before Israel's war of independence in 1948, although local Palestinians dispute their claim of ownership. The settlers have gradually taken over several buildings. Now the settlers have their eye on two more Palestinian houses which, they say, were built on land belonging to Jews. The settlers have plans to build hundreds of apartments for Jews on land where Palestinian homes are standing now. This land grab in Sheikh Jarrah has provoked an international outcry, led by the US Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. What Mrs. Clinton is doing, she's supporting criminals. 
she's supporting people that are criminals. They are squattering to our land, they are building on our land. It's illegal. Not satisfied simply with evicting Palestinians from areas close to the old city, Arie King has decided to boldly go into new territory, beyond Israel's separation wall. This is generally off limits for Israelis, but not for Arie King. We just lost the Kalangia Atarot uh, checkpoint facing to north. We are now, right now, in the Kalandia neighborhood. Next neighborhood we will cross is Kfar Akeb, and the last one will be Samir Amis. All of them are neighborhoods of uh, Yerushalayim. We will see at the end of the road a building that belong, uh, that is built on our land. Right now we can see the people building there, illegal building on a land belonging to Jews. On the left side, he claims here, that this land has been in Jewish hands for more than 70 years. From All of these beautiful palaces are on my land, and the police are not coming here. The municipality don't care about what's happening here. And uh, when we are talking about uh, illegal buildings, this is maybe the best example because they are building, building it on Jewish land and nobody is uh, taking care of that. Uh, this is why I call this area uh, the Wild East. But hang on a moment, this is Kfar Aqab. Yeah. This is on the other side of, of the, the wall. It's yeah. the Ramallah side of the wall. This is Palestinian land. What are you no, talking about? No, this is, this is part of Yerushalayim, exactly like where I live. Mount Olive. This land has been fought over, conquered and lost many times. The Greeks, the Romans, the Muslims, the Crusaders, just some of the armies who did battle here. Who owns Jerusalem becomes a matter of historical interpretation. Even in recent times, the land surrounding the old city has passed through Turkish, British and Jordanian hands. The occupying power sometimes issued land ownership documents to people living there. And this is where modern day Israel applies double standards. It often accepts documents from previous rulers when they're presented by Jews, but not when they're presented by Arabs. And so Arie King will continue his mission to remove Palestinians from Jerusalem and erase their history, replacing it with a purely Jewish narrative. And Sheikh Musa will continue his battle to save his home and his heritage from the settlers and the city planners. We don't uh, have a plan as, 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 as far as how many Jews or Arabs we live in this we live in East Jerusalem. I mean, when the municipality defines a certain area as a residential area, it doesn't say whether it's going to be Arab houses or, or houses for Jews. This is up to the owner of the land to decide. We are holding on by our fingernails to the two-state solution. Today, it is still barely possible to etch out a political boundary in, the, uh, in Jerusalem which will be both acceptable to the parties and viable after the agreement is reached. We are very close to losing that. If current trends continue for another six months, year or two years, this all will be lost. Many powers have dreamt about Jerusalem. It is Israel's dream to crown the city as its eternal, undivided capital. That dream is now close to becoming reality. The government and the settlers are swallowing up East Jerusalem. This is happening right under the nose of the international community. Yet hardly a voice is raised in protest. And that was Holly Landgrab. And I'm pleased to say joining us here in the studio, Al Jazeera Zawad Juma, who spent several months in Jerusalem recently making uh, your film, a two-part film, in fact, for Al Jazeera, Jerusalem, A Rock and a Hard Place. So if we 
think about these two films, what's the difference between them or what's changed in that time or what hasn't changed even? Uh, sadly, as many Palestinians and even Israelis probably would tell you that the situation in the city of Jerusalem, occupied Jerusalem that is, has only got worse. Mm. The, the wall that started at, at that time is now almost complete. Uh, Jerusalem is separated from its nearby uh, uh, West Bank uh, uh, strategic depth uh, hinterland, so to speak. Mm. Um, there are uh, more and more encroachment on the old city in Jerusalem. And as uh, one of our characters would, would say, it's almost game over for Jerusalem. What do you mean game over? For many Palestinians who I met throughout the, the, the making of this film, they say our lives has become almost impossible in Jerusalem. You will find more and more Jerusalemites are leaving the city to live in the suburbs of Jerusalem. Mm. And, 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 and increasingly you will find less and less Palestinians in the city, which is what many of the Israeli settler organizations is, uh, is dream really. Mm. And um, what often surprises me and which I was confronted with while I was in Jerusalem is, that this settler organization is not something on the fringes of Israeli politics. It is the most powerful political movement in Israel. And not only that, they have powerful friends in the United States, you mm. know. Yeah, sadly, in many ways, uh, the Palestinians are in a tight spot, literally between a rock and a hard yeah. place. Well, well seeing, seeing as you mentioned it, Howard, we have got a clip from your film, Jerusalem, a rock and a hard place. Let's have a look. This was a business hub for Palestinians in Jerusalem. I remember when I was a little kid, I would come with my family. This was the most expensive part of Jerusalem. It was an industrial zone. Israel decides to build a wall that connects a street. There used to be a street that connects with all of the different communities in East Jerusalem. They come, they build a wall, and they shut it, and they say, you are no longer have access to your neighbor. You no longer have access to your school. You no longer have access to your work. We came down from the neighborhood that I live in, good infrastructure, the new U.S. Embassy, and then you drive down and the first thing you get is a police station, a border police that kind of clarifies, from this point on, we need to be in control. And then you drive through a Palestinian neighborhood, but because there's a settlement here, the settlement behind us, um, then you see there's good infrastructure, there's lights, there's sidewalks, and then the entrance to the settlement comes and just after it, it ends. There's no sidewalk you're in a Palestinian neighborhood and you just really see the difference and the fact that nobody cares about the infrastructure from that point on, because really it's about infrastructure for Jewish population. So we see Omar and Sahar in that clip. Can you tell us a little bit more about them? Uh, Omar is a young uh, Christian Palestinian from East Jerusalem. His family goes back to the 13th century. So mm. uh, it's a man with roots. For me and, and, and throughout the film, you, you get to really go on this journey with Omar, who shows you that the Israeli occupation doesn't really differentiate between a Muslim and a Christian. Mm. It differentiates against all Palestinians. And, and, and the story of, of Omar really encapsulates that. And then Sahar, who we saw on uh, the other Sahar side. Sahar is an extremely atypical Israeli. Mm. The vast majority of Israelis from a young age, 16 years old and above, serve in the Israeli army. And in many ways, and, and, and this is one of the issues we also uh, touch on in the film, Although the Israelis interact with Palestinians almost on a daily level, they don't really know the Palestinians. They are very alienated from them. The only way they know them is from the other side of the gun, where they're at a checkpoint or on a patrol, etc. Let's talk about Jerusalem, the city, rather than, I mean, you've been describing two, two people there. The city itself, when I think about recent history, I think about Donald Trump's visits there, uh, the US recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital and moving its embassy there, or opening its embassy there. That has a huge effect on the city, and we're talking about the United States having an effect here, not even the Israelis and the Palestinians. Indeed, uh, from f the fig leaf that used to surround the role of the United St States has really fallen. For many years, uh, the United States described itself as an honest broker, but with Trump, he says it as it is. And what was convoluted and, and, and packaged in nice words before in the Clinton administration or the Obama administration, it's now out there. So for the Palestinians, it's very demoralizing. Uh, and and for also for many Arab countries, the, uh, many Arab countries believe that the United States is a friend of the Arab world, but the people on the street, the people you meet in Jerusalem will tell you otherwise. Mm -hmm. Awad Juma, great to have you with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Uh, do be sure to check out the Rewind page though at AlJazeera.com for more films from this series. I'm Kamal Santamaria from the whole team. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.